what is going on people i apologize for being 60 seconds tardy and dash and shout out to you for being so early in melbourne it's going to get techy this weekend isn't it but it's gotten even techier before then because one sir lewis hamilton has started speaking his mind bloody nora for the longest time we've been gifted greeted even with a lewis hamilton who's minded pr over and above absolutely everything else we saw last year the incident with george russell that soon thereafter lewis was approaching george to offer his hand we've heard as recently as this week oscar piastri talking about the two incidents that he's had with lewis and the respect and sports etiquette that's been manifest post race lewis once again reaching out to oscar doing one of these mea culpa i take responsibility that's been lewis hamilton for god knows how many years but he's had enough now and i think this syncs very nicely with the season that he's had having in that mercedes car what's he got to lose guys what has he got to lose zero his downside is limited he's not racing for a championship not even for 25 points over a race weekend at this rate he'll be lucky to get a pole over the next 22 races so what has this fella got to lose the seven time champion sir lewis carl davidson hamilton by speaking out he's had enough hasn't he so long in his own mind has he been persecuted by the fia the regulator of formula one what 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 has he got to lose absolutely nothing and i don't hate him i can't i cannot hate him for it nor will i do such a thing but there is downside ramifications which we'll get to let's let's talk about what he said first and again for table setting you guys have heard that the Mohammed Ben Sulaim investigation, which lasted 35, 30 days even, courtesy of the FIA committee on compliance or whoever. I mean, it's a sham, isn't it? They can call those committees whatever they want to, but are they doing their job properly? That's the substantive that F1 fans around the world are really interested in. But they investigated Mohammed Ben Sulaim on two counts. The first one for intervening in the investigation into Fernando and Alonso's team having touched, put hands on his car prior to the five second penalty having expired. That's the first one. The second one did Mohammed Ben Sulaim intervene at the Las Vegas Grand Prix, telling race inspectors to announce, pronounce that the track wasn't fit for racing two counts he was exonerated by the fia committee the ethics committee compliance officer he was exonerated by all of the above who said that there was it was beyond reasonable doubt that you can't claim that this dude did that and that's fair play still but there is inconsistency in that isn't there there is inconsistency where, where where's the fi investigation into the christian horner thing and you guys are going to say well it's a private matter red bull aren't a listed company they can do what they want it's an internal hr policy and ultimately both related parties are at the behest of that policy and their decisions and that's cool that's fine but what else with the FIA? How many times have they dropped the ball in recent memory? Remember when in Austria they had about 1,600 different tracking fingers and we're investigating them all post-race. What are we doing here? Abu Dhabi still fresh in the memory. Bloody Nora. I, my, I can continue. There has been loads of them. Checo Perez incident overhanging. Watch that investigation. The FIA can't get it right. They can't stop seizing defeat from the jaws of victory and then most recently of course table setting because we, we like a bit of table setting here on the camera and f1 channel what's going on the while i hope you're good good evening if you had everything to lose lewis would have spoken out that's who he is cued us listen the while you make the point to be fair you do make the point but i'm going to come on to the down downside ramifications of which i think there are a few I think there are a few, and that concerns me, my racing cap, firmly on. But let's talk to what happened in Business F1. I always forget the name. Is it F1 Business or Business F1? Anyway, it's a publication that's not got the greatest reputation decided upon. They just write stuff, don't they? They, they? they were responsible, as an example, for leaking the name of the complainant 
in the Christian Horner debacle. I mean, what sort of journalism is that? Integrity, responsible, professional code of conduct and ethics. I mean, this the, these guys write whatever they want to write and harm whoever they want to harm. And they did that again only a few months past when they wrote an article accusing without find foundation mind one Susie Wolf of acting upon a conflict of interest. Here's what they said. And actually, do I read it out? I'm not even going to read it. I'm going to paraphrase. It's tacky this is because I don't want to get sued. And what they've said about Susie Wolf, especially in hindsight without foundation, just looks rogue. Okay, here's what they said. Here's what the accusation was. That Toto Wolf had rocked up at a team principal meeting with knowledge of circumstances and situations that he he shouldn't have knowledge of. Where the speculation being that the only place he could have got that from was his wife, who apparently would have access, would be privy to some sort of hidden fountain of FIA knowledge, being the FIA, the head of the FIA Academy, the women's series. It doesn't quite, it doesn't, I don't know, doesn't quite add up that. The maths doesn't maths, I can't square it. Now, initially I reacted thus. Okay, so if there has been a conflict of interest, if Toto rocked up to a Grand Prix and knew in advance that there was going to be an ever so slight rule and reg change and Mercedes had those tools ready to equip the car with, then you've got to ask questions. And that was the accusation that was made around the conflict of interest. But then if you are the FIA and you're worth your metal as a regulatory body, then you've got to investigate on evidence, right? It can't be hearsay. You see the due respect that they've given to the Christian Horner situation. I'd have handled that with kid gloves, probably a bit too much. So a bit too risk averse because they still haven't investigated for crying out loud. But on the flip side of that, with one Susie Wolf straight in there, weren't they? They couldn't wait to investigate that one. <laughs> Where is the evidence? They didn't even need a complaint on the bloody, on the, the FIA compliance officer's hotline. Straight in there with that statement were the FIA. We will investigate this conflict of interest seriously, yada, yada, yada. At which point the 10 team said, you know what, I'm out of this. They all issued exactly the same statement saying that they'd lodged no official complaints with the FIA. You run your own, lads. You run your own. Don't look at us. Christian Horner did the same. I've lodged no official complaint, said the Red Bull team principal on Sky Sports F1. The FIA were barking up the wrong tree and rescinded all of their nonsense soon thereafter so that's your table setting now yesterday Mohammed Ben Salam was exonerated cool shortly thereafter Susie Wolf put out her statement where she's done something very clever and I, I need to speak to it she's almost mirrored their statement hasn't she She's spoken to all the things that they've said that they'd exercised throughout their investigation of the head of the FIA Mohammed Ben Sulaim being transparency Improper behaviour. Susie Wolf has talked about all these things very deliberately, in my humble opinion, and I love it. I love it. Not talking about them. That's that was the that's what constituted the investigation. That that was the framework. She said that's what FIA. That's what F1 lacks, and no longer is she not going to speak out about it. People think that they people who think they sit in silence that that's being brave. Susie Booth is calling them out. I'm not having it. And props to her. Props to her. Lodge your formal complaint in a court of law, no less. Of course, I've had enough. Listen, I've had it. Can you imagine for a second? Listen, let's do this one. Can you imagine being a woman in F1? Rebecca Clancy, Herbert, go and check this video out. She spoke about it quite extensively and very articulately, more succinctly, than I ever could. You just imagine how difficult it is to be. So I'm not even going to do the minority thing because that's that's uh, muddy in the waters. What we're talking about is being a woman on the grid in two two zero two four. Can you imagine the plot? And then you see this with Christian Horner and the way that the FIA are acting. Mohammed Ben Salim posting the pictures on his Instagram with Max Mosley. And again, you can go and look up his shenanigans and his um, indiscretions. 
and bloody Prince Andrew. And we all know what he was alleged to have gotten up to. So how are you going to post that Mohammed Ben Sulayem, head of the FI, FIA even? I can't even talk, I'm so bad. How are you going to post that on Instagram commemorating 20 years of the Bahrain Grand Prix? The levels of insensitivity from this dude in this senior position boggles the mind genuinely. I just don't understand it. Honestly, in the world, it's... it's Baffling the well, world, you're far too kind. I, I, I'm i lost for words here. But Lou said the FIA is comparable to, to the Kardashians. I really never seen anything like this in all my years watching, not even Mosley Balestra. Not sure he'll be forced out before. So you see this. All right, we're going to get to it in a while, I promise you. Oh, Matthew Brown, you're far too kind, you guys. Um, Felipe will lose against the FIA filing a lawsuit for a race 16 years ago when you had a role in your own downfall is just a joke. Matthew Nawal will get to all that. Nawal, that point's coming. I'm telling you, that, that point is coming about Lewis Hamilton and the one that you made earlier, hybrid, what's going on? Pince Andrew. Can you imagine? Pince Andrew. <laughs> Look, all right. So just imagine, let me finish this soliloquy on, on being a woman in F1. Just imagine how isolated one must feel as a woman on the grid especially you know when it's not um my old boss used to say when people leave the company make sure you celebrate them because if you don't celebrate them it it leaves a it leaves a bad taste in the mouth of the people still at the coal face right because when they leave they're expecting a similarly dull send-off celebrate their tenure and i think this parlays very nicely into this example right Rebecca Clancy, Natalie Pinkham, Naomi Schiff, of course, um, Jess Hawkins, Michelle Muto. These girls and ladies will be looking at this Christian Horner fiasco. C can you imagine what they're thinking of the FI? Their inaction speaks volumes and even their attempt to cover it up. Max, how about you go and speak unequivocally about Christian Horner in support of that chap? Like, what are we doing? Like, how dare you? Zero, you're a legend. Thank you so much. How very dare you, FIA? Like, how dare cover up as well? Inaction is one thing, yeah. But now you're going to try and convince Max Verstappen to, to take arms up against his father, Joss. What? In the name of what? Defending a man who's got these allegations in tow. If you're having an absolute job, honestly, beggar's belief. The FIA, every single day you wake up and you're surprised. We shouldn't be, but you're surprised by the new lows that the FIA are hitting. So go on then. <laughs> Susie Wolf pushes this, uh, this statement out and says something to the effect of, you're not going to stay in silence anymore. I'm going to talk up. I've lodged an official complaint with the French court against the FIA for the allegations that they leveraged against me a few months back. Of course, hold them to account. If they're not going to hold themselves to account, then somebody else has to. Of note, someone senior, someone, that person has a name. Her name is Susie Wolf. Let's go. Come on, MBS out. So then, shortly thereafter, Lewis Hamilton follows suit, yeah? Here's what Lewis has got to say. And this is Andrew Benson of the BBC writing this article, by the way. And that matters. Because there are a lot of gossip folks in and around F1 at the moment. And not all... All publications are made equal. But some, they say, are made more equal. Are more equal than others. Andrew Benson is serious of the BBC and he said, Lewis Hamilton says there is, quote, no transparency and no accountability in Formula One, not the FIA, in Formula One more broadly, that the sport continues to be rocked by off-track wrangle. Listen, it's been a craziness of a season thus far, right? You couldn't even, like, you can't even, you couldn't have imagined it that it would be so boring and monotonous on track and so, so techy off. It's almost like there's a like the racing gods have have gifted this to us in anticipation of the season of monotony that that ensues. 
Andrew Benson writes, the seven-time champion appeared to conflate controversies involving the governing body, the FIA, and the behaviour of Red Bull team principal Christian Horner, and that's significant. Speaking before this weekend's Australian Grand Prix, Hamilton said, with the FIA, things happening behind closed doors, there is no accountability, and the fans need that. Yeah, the fans do need that. The fans do need that. Don't they, Matthew? Far too kind, Mr. Brown. We need to move on from 2008 and 2021. Lewis and Max have no right to lose their championship for somebody they had for something they had no part in. Susie's case, however, deserves more attention. Great work, Cam. You guys, far too kind, Matthew. And I am going to get to that 2008 chaos. Steve A says, "Oh, the humanity from España." All right, let me read out this. Thank you so much. You guys are too. Far too kind. I'm humbled, truly. Look, Lewis continues. How can you trust? This is mad. Coming from the seven time champion, yeah? Lewis continues. How can you trust the sport and what is happening here if you don't have that? When he says that, of course, he's meaning accountability and transparency. And he's right. You can't be trusted. How do you know? Any regulatory body worth its matter, open, honest, transparent consistent across all related parties black white woman feet like it doesn't matter You've got to be consistent and you need to have robust processes in place you guys got listen i've challenged anyone to go and read the sporting code of conduct and the regs they're just written like a five-year-old has penned them for crying out loud. No definitions at the outset. It just reads like, non what are we talking about? Define an overtake. What is an apex? Any contract worth its metal will have these terms and definitions at the outset early on so that anybody that picks it up and reads it knows what they're reading. No, these rules and regs that the FIA have penned read like a five-year-old has penned them. My son could write that it's nonsense it's absolute nonsense and then the wonder why when a rock up at australia for the grand prix this weekend that there's always this bloody wiggle room and interpretation and lando norris is like jump starting but the transponder didn't work and similarly checo perez like why is he rolling so like it's all this nonsense man charlie white in r.i.p lewis hamilton is right there is no transparency. There's been no transparency for the longest time. And listen, like I said yesterday, if this was a rinky-dink formula, then all right, cool. We, we could tolerate it, yeah. Like we move, whatever. But it's not a rinky-dink formula, is it? This is like the, this is the creme supposed to be. The creme de la creme of, of motorsport globally. WTF, man. Like, come on. Like, what are we doing here? Hamilton praised F1 Academy direct Susie Will for taking legal action against the FIA. So those guys have known each other long. Do not get it twisted. There is loyalty here. What you think Lewis Hamilton's going to come out and speak against one Susie Wolf? You're having a giraffe, ain't you? You're having an absolute laugh. No chance. I I just oh, beggars believe, man. I just can't believe that we're here. You can hear the disbelief in my tone. Lewis Hamilton continues. <laughs> this is the this is the one this is the one look when asked <laughs> so wolf announced their legal case which is believed to be one one of defamation against a number of senior figures within the fia on the same day as organization's ethics committee cleared its president why go on then even that why is the ethics committee in where, where's the independent party outside of it you know like red bull hired an independent k king's council right casey to investigate all of this where's the independent party how comes we don't know about that no it's the fia it's his mates investigated it how else did we think what else did we think the outcome was going to be for pete's sake it's crazy go on the mercedes driver said i'm incredibly proud of susie she's so brave and stands the incredible values as a leader in a world where often people are silenced for her to be standing up sends such a great message and i love that she's taken it out of this world and is fighting it from the outside let's go do you know what i mean let's go okay 
how can you trust the sport? There's one piece in particular that I need to find. Okay, I remember it. Paraphrase Cameron. <laughs> when asked Sir Lewis Hamilton whether he can have confidence in Mohammed Ben Sulayem's leadership, Lewis Hamilton's response was that he never has. And that is damning. They need to get rid of this dude because a, a, a fish smells from the head down, right? How can you have this dude? His, his role is untenable now. How can you have this dude up there parading around when the sight of him reeks of incompetence? I mean, like, what are we, what are we doing here? It's, it's not good enough. I'll tell you that from now. It's not good enough and they need to do something about it. However, let me put on my racing cap now and address some of the things that you guys have been talking about in here. So, Nawal, listen, I, I understand what you were saying, Nawal, about Lewis Hamilton would address it even in his peak time. And I think that's I think that's true. And I think that's super admirable. Hybrid says 9 p.m. race for me this weekend, getting some brews and watching in the hot tub. Let's go, Oscar. Hybrid, listen, I wish it was 9 p.m. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it live. Die Hard F1 fan card revoked. Jomo, you're a legend. Please do hit the like, por favor. It means a lot to me. All right, look. So the well mentioned earlier, and I want to address these points as I put my racing cap firmly back on for the next 10 minutes or so. I'm not sure that I'm really fond of that. Uh, let me give you a good example. I'm going to set the scene like this. Johnny Herbert will be stewarding at this race weekend. And I fear for Max Verstappen because Johnny Herbert only this week has been talking, praising us about Christian Horner saying that he should... He should sit down, he should resign from his position. So that for me shows you, Johnny Johnny Herbert showed you his hand and he's not shy. He's never been shy. He was the one who spoke out against Red Bull and Max Verstappen when that needed to happen or when at least he thought that needed to happen. So now you've got this guy as a steward. Now I trust Johnny Herbert's professionalism. I trust his ability to be unbiased and to look, look through the lens of objectivity. But it, it's there. It's there. And we know it's there. So like, I don't know. And with that, fast forward now to Lewis Hamilton. Imagine, imagine if 2025 is 2021 all over again. Well, and this is, this is the point that's upsetting me, guys and girls. Imagine if it gets close. Imagine if Ferrari give Sir Lewis and Charles Leclerc a car worthy, capable of challenging a Max Verstappen over the course of 24 races next season. Just imagine, imagine towards the end, towards the latter stages of that season, imagine it gets close in the while you're far too kind, I'm telling you. Imagine it gets close. What then? What, you don't think the FIA are vengeful? You saw how they tried to persecute Sir Lewis Hamilton with jewellery gate every single bloody time, notwithstanding the fact that stewards have long said that that stuff doesn't matter. That the only Roman Grosjean, when he had his big big accident, said that the only piece of his hand that didn't burn was the piece that his ring was on. So, like, what are they talking about? Rules for rules' sake, as always, FIA. But I say that to say this: I am worried for Lewis Hamilton going forward. If he's ever in a position to challenge for a championship, I am so concerned, as if the FIA didn't have it out for him before, and wouldn't rule. Their rule was not a function of their bias, their position against him. Now, what do you think it's going to be like now? That's my problem. That's my problem. And I don't know, maybe he's dialing out, maybe he expects to accrue this goodwill and reap it back during 2020. I don't know. Maybe he just sees, like Noir says, maybe he just sees that, listen, this is this is my truth and I'm going to speak it. Noir says that everyone has taken notice of your of your hard work and integrity a true fan of racing and f1 keep it up keep up the great work there is too much money at stake for f1 to take action against mbs i hope i'm wrong the while so here's what's going to happen here's what's going to happen with with mbs here's my prediction and again nobody bats a thousand everyone's hot everyone's had a a dodgy hot take or two myself included in that but here's what i'm reading so F1 as desperate as they are. So two things. F1, re. there's talk about F1 departing 
um, removing themselves from the working arrangement that they currently have with the FIA. That's a, that's one rumour. Second rumour is that they don't want to rock the boat. It would be more harming, more damaging to the F1 as a brand if Mohammed Ben Sulaim is removed. And I think there's there's parallels here between Christian Horner and MBS. So here's what I'm hearing, that the F1 teams are just going to sit back, wait until the elections, I think December of next year, and then get rid of him that way. To have somebody resigning and quitting, it's just another bloody... Do you know what I mean? It's another news story for the Daily Mail featuring the latest and greatest that F1 has to offer. And I don't think anybody wants that at this stage. That's my, that's, that's my take. But who knows? Matthew, far too kind. FYI, Johnny Herbert said... That he's heard the max to, to Mercedes deal is is nearer is nearer than the oh my gosh of it. I read the article. I think we need to brace for another big move. Go on then, Matthew. Should we talk about this? <laughs> All right, look, per the video that I put out yesterday, I'm not sure. All right, look, so the chat around Max Verstappen going to Mercedes potentially is driven, is a function even of the fact that in 2026 brand new rules brand new regulations yeah and there's going to be much more emphasis on the power unit now who amongst the current 10 teams which one of those are you backing to build a power unit well ideally you want a works team right now red bull are trying to get there with ford et albert ford going to pull out potentially the rumor is that the ford backed or the ford branded Red Bull power units not putting out that much BHP, but Mercedes are ahead of the game, as you probably expect them to. So with one eye cast firmly on 2026 and and how this transpires, welcome Matthew. Thank you so much. How that's going to transpire. I think, I think, I don't know if it's as likely as that article makes it out that Max Verstappen moves, that takes the plunge to the guys and girls at Brackley and Bricksworth being the Silver Arrows team. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. I like another story, though. You heard me talk about this yesterday, right? Aramco, potentially by now Aston Martin, as Lawrence Stroll's interest in all things F1 wanes proportionate to his son's underperformance in that car. I, I like that. Because Aramco, if they get in their Saudi Arabian oil money, if they come into F1 now, then you're going to see some blank checks being written for the likes of Adrian Newey and Max Verstappen. And who could, listen, cash rules everything around me, cream get the money, dollar, dollar bills, or who can turn down 100 million US dollars? Who? Not Adrian Newey and definitely not Max Verstappen. So I don't... And then the Honda link as well that I didn't even talk about. Honda. Max Verstappen knows what Honda can produce. He's been the benefactor of Honda's competence with all things power unit over the past few years. Of course he has. That's still a Honda power unit to all intents and purposes, just under a different name, Red Bull Power Trek. Nah, man, that's a Honda power unit in essence. So Max Verstappen knows their competence. Would he be hesitant? Would he think twice about linking up with them again? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he'd happily go there again with Honda. What? I mean, you know what time it is with Honda. And Max, more importantly, knows what time it is with Honda. So Max the Aston Martin, eh? Imagine that. Max and Alonso in the Aston Martin, the green bull in 2026. Alongside Lewis and Charles Leclerc, potentially Carlos and George in the Mercedes. Oh, my God injected into my veins i'm here for it let's go let's go i would be here for it um i don't know i don't know i just feel like i want to i'll tell you the truth i'll let you into um a secret i, I almost want to just fast forward through this season and just crack on with 2026 i'll be honest with you i shouldn't say that as an f1 fan as an f1 content creator that's that's not fair that's the truth though what, Lewis in the red, in those red overalls, getting into that red car, behave yourself, be here for it, you know what I mean? Kenny, thank you so much, says, given the generally, given the generally engine parity, 
and Red Bull powertrains X Honda are doing the engine and Ford are only responsible for the electronics. It's more about car plus aero. It's a good shout, Kenny. It is a good shout. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's speculation, isn't it? It is speculation. Yeah, I, I think you're. I think you're absolutely on the money as as at now. Red Bull powertrains. They've just lifted and dropped the the intellectual property, haven't they? Red Bull. That's what they've done. And maybe they might want to continue that relationship. I don't know if Ford sacking it off as their as they're saying that they might do. I'm not sure if that's the upside for Red Bull going forward. <laughs> But then aren't Honda exclusively providing Aston Martin an engine? Maybe not exclusively. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? I came here to talk about Lewis Hamilton and, and now I've gone mahoosively off track. Go on and let me talk about the world mentioned something else that I want to talk to very quickly before I run away. Let me read this out. Thank you so much, Noir. You're far too kind. Everyone's taken taken as the audience. That's about me. And I appreciate it. But listen, I'm trying to trying to i'm trying to break bad on this channel this year i've had enough one thing that i don't want to lose out to uh, i don't want i don't want another 10 years to pass and and have to live with more regrets oh cameron listen you had a you had a good crack at that channel but if you'd had only just kept it up i don't want to be having those um those hypothetical conversations with my future self like I desperately don't want to. Hence why you see me try and up. Listen, if I if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But it's not going to not work out because of lack of industry. That's the promise that I've made to myself and my family and to you guys, more importantly. Hence why we're trying to do it every day and talk about F1 and news and reports, etc. Because, um, I mean, there's nothing much going on track, is there? Let's be honest. Not for now, at least. Quali might be interesting on Saturday morning. But, I mean, come on my guy peter wins us out there in person right there was too much money at stake for f1 to take action against mbs i hope i'm right yeah so i think you're right in the while with that I, I think i addressed it already that as i understand it f1 are keen not to move against mbs it doesn't need to be a coup d'etat you know because the 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 optics the visuals look bad for all related parties right if they're seen to usurp him i think but for that i think they would have sacked him off a long time ago if i'm honest no but f1 doesn't need more debacle a more scandal at the moment that's one thing that f1 can do without right it almost needs a, or at least the powers that be this is what they think it almost needs stasis for the foreseeable no allegations, no scandal, no Mohammed Ben Sulaim investigations, no Susie Wolf speak it. Do you know what I mean? They hate this sort of stuff. What people speaking out. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. That's why Mohammed Ben Sulaim is in the background scurrying around, trying to smooth things over. Oh, Max, how about you come out and support your your old your old team principal here, Christian Horner, unequivocally? Why don't you do that? And this isn't something new. You guys know, anyone who's watched F1 for any length of time knows that Max Mosley is doing the same, if not worst. Um, similar with Bernie. Bernie's still in the background. There's some stories that one day I will, I will tell you, I promise. But Bernie's still in the background as at March 2-4, pulling strings like you would not believe. I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe and again, his, his missus, though, is kind of involved, isn't she? So, I don't know. Bravo, Noir. Noir is an absolute legend. Macon, wow, thumbs up. Let's go, Macon. Can't wait for 2025. Probably the same for Lewis as when Lauda was still low. Oh, my gosh, Noir. That is... Um... I just want to see him in the overalls, you know? <laughs> I think I might cry. I just want to see me the overalls of you. That day, like testing, two zero two five, where they come out and it's like Charlotte Lou. Oh my god! You know what it reminds me of? I let you into a secret. I remember talking about Obama becoming president, and I said to one of my best friends, "I goes, you know, when you know it's deep, when you see those two little girls right running around in in the gardens of the White House, that's when you know." And I think equivalent for me with Lewis, when I see him come out in those red overalls. 
Oh, do you want to see? Yeah, no, it's going to get... If, oh, if they can give that fella a car next year... Oh, my God. But the FIA, man, I wish... I'd Listen, I love that Lewis speaks out. I love it. Like, he's invested... I almost feel like, as a priority, I feel, I feel like he's more invested in that than he's in F1. I feel like he, I feel like he said that at some point that it's legacy and things that he's building. When he spoke the other day about Mercedes and why they were going to win another championship, why he was sure, he spoke about diversity and the fact that he's been involved in the process, didn't he? Everything he says at the moment is laced with diversity and inclusion and legacy building and the next generation and making things better for them. <laughs> so, listen, I don't know, maybe that is the priority, but I just, I, I almost wish... Just for future sake, in case at some point it gets close between Lewis and Max and Charles and whoever else. And the FI are forced to get involved and, and make a decision. You know, they're, they're not going to break Lewis any. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to give him any blies. They'll be ruling against Lewis Hamilton. They They can't wait. They can't wait to rule against Lewis Hamilton. For whatever reason, I can't even get into that because it's too late. <laughs> I can't even get into that. The world, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Don't know why you're a legend. Far too generous, Jeremy. Hit the like. Oh, I forgot Bernie. Oh, the world. Bernie's um, reckless. Okay, let me let me give Bernie some credit first. As far as his bit, and often this is the way, right? With these like business genius. There is an equal and opposite downside that comes with them. Indeed, you can't even separate the two. They're, they're the same entity, almost, and wrapped up in the in the package that was Bernie Eccleston. He's, he's a business genius. F1 wouldn't be what it is in 2024. But for Bernie Eccleston, but that, that necessitated dodgy dealings and cloak and daggers and odd comments that attack. You know what I mean? These bloody... These, these techie comments that didn't really hold any water and speaking out against Lewis and I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 chaos. Maker says Bernie's getting tip getting old. I can, so odd. I can spell it for the Oh my god, say it's not so. Say it's not so. But yeah, listen. I, I'm I'm glad. I'm happy that Lewis has spoken out. And not before time. Like, I think it's time that these guys, and it is this type of pressure from key stakeholders in a Sir Lewis, Cole Davidson, Hamilton, and the Susie Wolf, and the Toto Wolf. It needs to be those guys that kind of wield some inf influence in order to have the sword of Damocles wielded on MBS's head, or at least his tenure in as head of the FIA, right? I don't think it's going to happen, though. I'll be honest. I don't think it's going to happen. The wild don't do it to me. I've just read it. You see the smile on my face. If Lewis can win at that Ferrari, the debate about who is the GOAT, wow, it would be an amazing end to a stellar career. The wild, can you imagine the bookend? I can't even. The smile cannot wipe off my face thinking about it. Sometimes you get you the guys that know I'm on here talking about. I want to be objective, but listen, we've all got our favourites and me just thinking about Lewis winning in a red car. Oh, yeah. Chef's kiss. The the tears are coming to my eyes. It's just hay fever. Don't worry. <laughs> Grown men don't cry. I would cry. And if I'm live streaming that race, you know, at the last time I let you guys in, if at two things I'll end on, yeah. <laughs> I let you guys into a secret. The last time, in fact, the the only time I've ever cried, that'd be very nearly, but too too old and grey at that stage. The only time I've ever cried in F1, watching a race, was 2014 at Abu Dhabi. I told this story, but I'll tell it again. I, I think you guys will enjoy this. Lewis Hamilton's been my guy. Before Lewis, it was like... I, I, I like Schumacher towards the end, like 2004-ish. But again, same monotony thing, right? And again, 
Schumacher did some things to my driver, Damon Hill, at the time. In 1994, Adelaide, the Australian Grand Prix, which I'll never be ever able to forgive him for quite. And then Jacques Villeneuve shortly thereafter in 97 at Hellef. Um But then there was a driver called Lewis Hamilton, right? And watching him come up through GP2, the brilliant example, Silverstone, um, Maggots, into Beckett's, bloody on on PK Jr. and Pizzioni, three wide into that turn and ultimately nailed it. Like, I don't know, there was something about Lewis Hamilton's becoming his, his coming of age and his growing into F1 that just attracted me. And of course, there were the obvious reasons. First black man in F1, very good looking from Stevenage, UK. We shared that as well. Like, do you know what I mean? There were obvious things. Charismatic, had that cheeky smile about him and that twinkle in his eye and kind of said the right things. And do you know what I mean? There was something about Lewis Hamilton's coming of age that I was just, there were some things, multiple, about that whole coming of age that just attracted me to that fella. But the story of Lewis Hamilton, his, his, his learning curve wasn't, it didn't just climb right. It wasn't linear. Because <laughs> after 2006, 2007 happened and China, obviously, like he should have won that bloody championship. But for about a bit of bad fortune, China, there was the bloody gearbox that stopped working midway or partially through the final race in Brazil. In my humble opinion, Lewis, like, he was just unlucky. 2007 he was massively unlucky 2008 happened cool Lewis got it take that one but it felt like it was coming on the back of 2007 right that was a catch up a crawl of a championship if you will but then what happened 2009 2010 2011 nothing and the press were getting on Lewis. My guy Nasha said this best on Quick Stop. Like, the press were getting at him so incessantly that it was hard not to believe what they were saying. It was hard not to believe them when they were casting aspersions on Lewis Hamilton. I fell foul of it. I'm telling you, like, I started to buy into it. Is Lewis Hamilton's career going to be one of unfulfilled potential? Is he too much on the runway and not enough in the cockpit? The celebrity girlfriend isn't doing him any good. These are the types of things that the press and media are writing. That when all is said and done, Lewis Hamilton's career will be one of unfulfilled potential. Because remember, 2008 was like, what have you done for me lately? It was like five years ago, eh? From 2013, 2014, a long distant memory. There were new ones coming up now. Vettel was holding. Do you know what I mean? Like it was sometimes in sports, your era can just pass you by. Do you know what I mean? Like you, and you just never know. Sports dynasties end like this. And it just felt like F1 was just going to be one of those things to Lewis. Like it was just the racing gods can be cruel sometimes. And maybe they were going to be cruel to Lewis Hamilton. And his career was going to be one of unfulfilled potential. Maybe. That was the thought, right? So 2011, 2012 goes by and this brilliant racer that is Lewis Hamilton still hasn't won nothing. One championship and done. It looked like he was going to be another Damon Hill that was going to come and going to go, going to take his one championship and that was going to be it. But that can't be Lewis Hamilton, right? Not Lewis, because Damon was brilliant as well. But this dude's talent, as far as his ability to nail one lap, as far as his ability to put together a race like he just had that knowledge and he was committed and he kind of had everything in one right and you could see race by race you could see like he was like an onion his skill set was layered and race by race you would expose like and you'd see something else oh my god he's resilient as well holy smoke oh my god he can think his way for a championship as well what and then he's faster than anyone we've had like he F1 drivers normally have like an Achilles hit, like Vettel was super quick, right? But he couldn't, 
Like if he qualified in like seventh or eighth, he'd often struggle to work his way through the field in a in a car that was quicker. Schumacher, as brilliant as he was, was often a bit of a line stepper. So F1 drivers historically have these kind of Achilles heel. They're brilliant in one facet, but they're not so good in another, almost like a an equal and opposite offset. But Lewis at that time just seemed like he didn't have a weakness. It didn't seem like he had an Achilles heel, except here it was now. From 20, 2009 through 2013, there was the weakness. And I was like, okay, so here it is. Lewis is going to have this career and he's going to be unfulfilled potential. And that's going to be on his epitaph, sadly. And it became a real thing. It did. It did. And I, I didn't know whether this dude was ever going to win another chance. Go being good was never a question for Lewis Hamilton. He had that in bucket loads. Ability, speed, racecraft, tyre management. He had all of that maybe more than anybody else had ever had up until that time. But could he not, could he get another championship? Because if he couldn't, that's what the naysayers would say. Oh, well, he couldn't get it done, could he? He, he you know what I mean? He flash in the pan. His flame burned brightly, but it didn't burn for long. That's the sort of stuff that they were saying. So in 2014, when this fella, against that backdrop, managed to get it done, myself as a Lewis Hamilton fan, I was in a hotel and I cried. Like I stayed up and I watched it and I cried my eyes out. <laughs> Confession time. I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried until there were no more tears left because it was such a, it, I felt I lived vicariously through Lewis Hamilton. Like I read the criticisms, the British media were baying for him. They couldn't wait to start writing. Oh yeah, another one, another, another career unfulfilled. Like I, I, so when he won that championship in Abu Dhabi 2014, the weight was lifted off my shoulders too, like, and hence why I, I cried like a baby, properly sobbed, like crying noises and everything. <laughs> it meant a lot. It really, really meant a lot. <laughs> and so I say all that. <coughs> Give me and start crying again. <laughs> I say all that to say this: if he goes and wins again in that Ferrari, the eighth. On the back of Abu Dhabi in 21 and the the next three years, he was in a dog of a car. Oh my God. Can you imagine as a Lewis Hamilton fan, I will have to put my objectivity to the side for, for at least 12 months, you know, at least 12 months whilst, whilst we celebrate and revel in the record setting eighth. But I digress. Noir says it's not just talent, it's his character. And like you said, he's resilient. He's got everything, Noir. At his best, he's hard to beat. There's no way Anthony Hamilton would have stood for unrealised potential. It's true, Noir. But sometimes these things just happen, though, Noir. More often than not, right, in sports, when you think... I try to think of an example. You got, If you guys watch NFL, there's a dad... Is it Boritz? No, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering that name. Anyway, there was a, there was a, a famous father and son combination, and the dad... Really, he's become he's gone on to become a trainer since, and the dad figured that he was just gonna build the perfect quarterback. Right, from he was like six months old, he was feeding him the right things, nutrition, bloody organic stuff, training, stretching, everything was perfect. And ultimately, he just burned out. Right, he went, he got to college, and it was just like it wasn't for him. So I just think the story, more often than not, is what the British media were talking about. Oh yeah, another one, unfulfilled potential. And that's why I cried, but I will cry again if 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 he bangs, if he if he wins the record breaking eight for Ferrari, I will shed tears. I don't care. <laughs> Grown men don't cry, they say. Um, and finally, look, okay, state of F one. I wanted to drop this on you. So Australian Grand Prix qualifying is at four a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 4am. I think the race kicks off. Lights Out is at 5am Greenwich Mean Time. That's British time. Um, I don't know. I really want to stream it, but I don't know if I'm going to wake up. <laughs> I'll be honest. What are the stakes? Why am I waking up? 
what just be, just because it's a race weekend and it's F1, that's reason enough for me to Hulkenberg and K Mag. Macon says, oh, "Go on, let me read out this then before I run away." Um, Madeline says, "Holy smoke, Madeline! That's a question and a half. We'll address that at, at some point in the future." <laughs> Madeline, let me put the... Oh, go on, then I'm going to address this. Madeline says, Madeline, I'm trying to run away and you've just asked me a question to this. Last another 30 minutes. All right, look. Madeline says, Cam, a serious question now. Would you still be a Lewis fanboy if he was white? Hmm. Madeline, look, I don't know why... I, listen, as a as a black man that lives in the UK, I can lean into this. I can get... I could diatribe on this and go very deep, but... Let me, let me keep it as peripheral and surface level as possible. I don't know why. Listen, Dutch Max, let me flip reverse it so you understand it, Madeline. Dutch Max Verstappen fans, for the most part, look a lot like Max Verstappen. It's okay to root for the person that looks like you, right? There was a thing, let me explain to you what I mean by this. There was a thing in boxing. Now they say that the term is racist, but back in the day, it wasn't. They just banded it out. There was a thing in boxing called the Great white hope and here's what it means and here's why i don't think it's it has racist undertones if we if we're going there we're going to start to talk about this stuff because socio so, social injustice and socioeconomic stuff is a is a thing and there is an oh as far as the venn diagram there is an inter an overlapping sector where these things cross so stick to f1 but sometimes you've got to talk about this and since madeline's brought it up i will address it the great white hope in boxing. So Tommy Morrison was a brilliant example. And remember, look, I've wanted to, you know what, Madeline, I'm glad that you bring this up because I've wanted to say this for a while and we'll bookend this session with this and something else. <laughs> what WTF does it matter equally? Steve, a, but it does matter, Steve. I love your um, United Colours of Benetton lens, Steve, but it, here's why it matters. Look, Tommy Morrison, you guys can go and check my maths on this, but I remember this because I'm a massive boxing fan and my dad watches boxing. He'll probably be watching boxing now if you go into my folks' house. So the heavy boxing as a sport in the early 90s in particular was dominated by black men. Of course it was. Tyson, Holyfield, Riddick, but especially the heavyweight division, but even lower divisions, Sugar Ray Leonard, Aaron Pry, all the greats were either black or Hispanic, Roberto Duran, Alexis Arguello. These guys were either literally either black or Hispanic. So Caucasian fighters did not get a look in. They're like back in the day, okay, Henry Cooper and I don't know. Um, I'm trying to figure it so look at me struggling already for a Caucasian fighter of note. Henry Cooper is the only one I can mention. Henry Cooper, Rocky Marciano, um, Max Schmeling. But you see the way I'm struggling? This is the case in point, right? There were a gazillion successful black fighters. I've already gone through about 10 of them just off the top of the day. Holyfield, Tyson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mayweather, um, do you know what I mean? The rule was that all the champions were African-American or black. That was just the way that boxing was. So when one came along called Tommy Morrison and he wasn't black, he was Caucasian and a, a white American. The term, in fact, even before then, who um, Larry Holmes fought somebody called, I can't remember the guy's name. But there was a dude who started knocking out a white guy, big white guy, and start he started knocking out he knocked out Kenny Norton and all of a sudden people are like, Oh my god, there is a white guy, a white heavyweight who can box. He's incredible. What's this? This is a unicorn and they made a big thing about it. This dude for um gosh, I'm gonna have to look at the name. This dude for so he fought Larry Holmes. Great. I need to remember his name. Uh, Jerry Cooney. There you go. Okay, so this chap's name is Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney came up and all of a sudden, white America. There we go. Thank you, Rock. There we go. Thank you. So Jerry, Jerry Cooney came up and all of a sudden, white America got super excited, right? 
because for the longest time, or even back in the day with Jack Johnson, black heavyweight champions had always been black. Always just was whatever we can debate why or whatever, but it just was the way. So, of course, white America, when Jerry Cooney was rising to prominence and looking like he could be the next champion, finally an American white champion right and therein it, it, the, the phrase was coined the great white hope now bloody what's his name i can't even remember the guy's name used it the other day to say max verstappen was the great white hope but he's not used it in context i don't want to even want to say it's racist but he's not used it in the proper context the context is this Jerry Cooney was labelled the great white hope because he managed to penetrate and rise to the top of a sport that historically was dominated by people that didn't look like him. That's where that phrase comes from, the great white hope. It was Jerry Cooney and then thereafter it was Tommy Morrison. Tommy Morrison was the next heavyweight right that, was, that wasn't black that managed to somehow rise to the top. It's, it's rarefied air this and it just that's just what it was. So now flip this on its head. Madeline, I've just explained it to you in terms that you can understand. And Max Verstappen is, is similar but different. Max Verstappen rep represents something to the Dutch people who, in their own minds, when you speak to, I've got Dutch friends, right? I've got to listen to him. Classic racist statement. I've got Dutch friends or black friends. But listen, I speak to my friends and they say that they feel underrepresented in the world, right? A, a minority of sorts. And so when Dutch fans see Max Verstappen, representing their flag the netherlands of course they're going to root for him because he looks like them and he's from the same country as them what's wrong with that but madeline now now apply that to my trade how comes it's all right for jerry cooney and white america and it's okay for max verstappen and, and dutch fans around the world but i can't support the dude that looks like me just me uh, like you got to single me out every the rule can the rule works and it's pliable for everybody else jerry cooney tommy morrison great white hopes as far as boxing and that makes sense because every once in a while very very rarely does a caucasian man come along and start beating up black heavyweight it just doesn't happen right never parlay that to this now and this is where we get techie never ever in f1 apart from only one who was a test driver, yeah. Never ever since in F1 has there been, a, get black, a person of Karun kind of, but doesn't really count. But never ever since has there been a person of colour who's who's gone anywhere. Now all of a sudden, like Tiger and Serena and Venus, now all of a sudden you get a person of colour, a black man from the UK, who's come up now and he's nailing it. Not just part, of, not in there to just participate, but he's winning championships. Madeline, you got to, you've got to give me that. I'm sorry, you've got to, you've got to give me that. No, no, no. I understand, Madeline. I know you didn't mean there was no malice, and I think it's, I think the reason why I'm answering the question because I think it's worthwhile talking about. We don't talk about this, and and again, I hear people say when he was, it wasn't Blundell, Derek Warwick. When Derek Warwick, Derek Warwick referred to Max Verstappen as the great white hype. Or the great white hope, even. Um, the world, yeah, for education and setting an example for our kids. Maybe, just maybe, we can start changing behaviors. Just maybe in the US, great unfulfilled potential for this great expert. To, the world, I'm telling you, look at those strong words. Um, Madeline, there's something I was going to say to you just then. It's really bloody important, and I've forgotten. Yeah, Kenny, I agree. It's a really, really good question. But I just think, um, bang, Derek Warwick leveraged. So when Lewis is winning all the time, so between 2014 and 2020, the only season that Lewis didn't win was 2016 when it was Nico, right? So it was this period of dominance. Yeah, it's a very fair question, Joe. And I'm glad, Madeline, thank you for pitching that because I've always wanted to address this. I don't think, I think because I watch so much bloody sport, I have this context and people don't share it like people don't talk about this stuff a lot and then it's the great white hope is racism and all that. it's not racist you you got to understand the etymology of the word right hence why i'm giving you the boxing background because that's where we that's where i think the term was first used now for Derek warwick to leverage in the midst of lewis hamilton's dominance so from 2014 
through to 2021, every season except for 2016 when Nico won. Fair play, it was dominance, wasn't it, from Lewis? And some says it's mon mon some say that it was monotonous. And I, I agree with them, particularly to the latter stages when he didn't have a... 2016 was an incredible season, but towards the end, like 2019, 20 maybe, like I, I was quite pleased that like nobody wants to see a non-race. But then for Derek Warwick to levy the term Max Verstappen in 21 is the great white hope completely misconstrues the situation. He's betrayed the term and what the term really means because what F1 has been is the flip reverse of boxing, right? Remember, boxing dominated historically by ethnic minorities, particularly in the higher weight classes, heavyweight, all black, lower weight classes, black and Hispanic, always white people generally Caucasian boxers didn't really get a look in so to say great white hope in that context makes sense because for the longest time always Caucasian boxers could never get a look in there were never Caucasian champions or hardly any Rocky Marciano Max Schmeling going back hundreds of years or whatever flip that into what Derek Warwick said now F1 historically when has there been a person of color as a champion Lewis Hamilton won by himself only 2008, 2014 through to 2021, every single year apart from 2016. Before him, there was nobody. So what are we talking about, Derek, Warwick? Derek Warwick? What are you on about? Great Max Verstappen is the great white hope. What? Because Lewis won a few championships. How about before then? Go on, let's go through. Giuseppe Farina, 1950. Or through, or through to bloody 2040, like 23rd, how many years is that? 63 years, no person of colour, even in the champ, even in the series, let alone winning races. What are we talking about? Derek? So I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure whether Derek was being malicious. What Derek wanted to say was that he's glad for, he, he wants change, right? He wanted somebody capable of challenging Lewis Hamilton. He's used the wrong term. Whether there was malice behind it or not, I can't I, I can't even get into that speculation. It's hard to be so definitive about these accusations without getting into somebody's head, right? Maybe, maybe it was a bit malicious, maybe it wasn't. Is there right racist? I couldn't tell you. I don't know the guy. But what I do know is that that term comes from boxing and boxing, great white hope. That comes from boxing because boxing historically has been dominated by non-white fighters. So every time one would raise up, whether that was Jerry Cooney, whether that was Tommy Morrison, whether that was Rocky Marciano back in the day, uh, every time one would rise up to the top, we would use the phrase, they would use the, use the phrase, boxing aficionados, aficionados would use the phrase, great white hype. You can't just you can't just change white to black and then parlay that to Lewis Hamilton because F1 has been dominated by Caucasian drivers for the longest time, every single year before Lewis Hamilton and every single year since. So what are we talking about, Derek? It's nonsense. <laughs> Drop some education. Not F1's fault. It's origin. I'm not saying that it's F1's fault, BB. I'm just I'm just I'm I'm truth saying out here. This isn't me being bitter. I'm just trying to give like Obama Rock or Tiger or Serena and Venus but I'm just I'm trying to give the context because Madeline asked the question rewind the tad Steve and you will you will hear the context I promise again Lewis was in a white dominated sport so your comparison to boxing is irrelevant uh it's, it's flipped brain it's flipped go back and listen to what I've just said right let me leave you guys with this as I ponder whether to wake up and watch an Austrian Grand Prix at God knows what time in the morning. Um, I'm reminded of Adelaide 94. And here's, here's the stark contrast thing again. Because um, this is quite important. Look, I was thinking, I, I really want to wake up, but it's very, very early and I've had a tough week. So again, I need to balance it out. I need to think of the risks and rewards, right? What am I due to gain? Is it going to be a dead Grand Prix? Is it going to be rubbish? Or am I going to get a proper Grand Prix with stakes and uncertainty and... Um, and decent racing and overtaking a race that I won't know who's going to win until the very end of it. Probably not. Probably not right. 
And then I thought, let me try and remember the last time I woke up this early for a Grand Prix. You know, and it was 1994, the Australia Grand Prix. 20 years ago. One Damon Hill versus a Michael Schumacher. And why did I, you know how old I was then? I was very young. <laughs> and why did I have to wake up with my old man and watch that? Why? Why did I have to wait? Because there were stakes. It was the final Grand Prix. It was going to be an epic one. Just couldn't even. I couldn't. I couldn't even sleep. I wanted to see who was going to nail. It was Schumacher. It was Hill. It was stakes. It was two giants of their era. And I, I needed to watch it. I couldn't not be up to watch that. It was epic and I'm glad that I woke up because it's one of those moments in F1, no sporting history that you needed to see live. It was one of those ones where were you when Schumacher took out Hill and then the circumstance around it. And that was the year that Senna died. It was just, it was like, I don't know, you needed to watch that. So you needed to be there to watch that season because it was so, it was just that type of season, you know. It's a parlay into two, so that 2024 now. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I need to. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's not the same, is it? And at risk of sounding like the old man down the pub. Back in my day, it was all very different, weren't it? Back in my day, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it, guys and girls. As badly as I want to stream and watch the race and quality with you guys, 4am f1 give me some stakes give me a reason to watch and if that's not there if it's not 1994 again and blood and guts and schumacher and hill and all of the things that that came with senna and stakes and british versus just like do you know what i mean like it's just it was too much and if it's not that then i'm not sure i've got enough reasons to wake up in the morning at 4am and watch myself on Australian Grand Prix but I digress you guys have been legends thank you so much for the generosity we'll, we'll catch up I promise but between now and then the prosecution rests no further questions runner